Hello guys and welcome back to the other modules of our just probabilistic language using the stand. And now the thing that you just remember from the prior tutorials that we had, you notice that we just pick up the data, the woman, which essentially it was American woman aged between 30 and 39. We had the woman's weight on the x-axis and we had the woman's height on the y-axis and we just plotted those, I should say, those pairs of the height and weight for each woman. We had 15 women, and we noticed that if we just use the linear, I should say, model, that you saw that, for example, when we just plotted that, we just had, for example, they plotted the X, the X represented the woman's weight, and the Y represented the woman's height, and we plotted it, and also we just fitted that with the generalized linear model that the, on the woman data sets, you notice that the thing that we just got from the plot, it's essentially with some of the points at the beginning and at the end, it suggested that the model can be represented by a polynomials of degree 2 or essentially what do we call them as a quadratic function. And that's where we're ending, I should say, our tutorials on the previous models after fitting it that with the stand file. However, this suggestion that this model can be represented and modeled by a quadratic function, it means that essentially, if I just go back to our whiteboard session here, we can come here with this model. We say that, okay, let me just change the color. We said that the height can be regarded as a normal distribution with the parameter new and the dispersion measure of the sigma, and that's why we just call that the parametric method, because we just use the parameter to represent, I should say, the model. And we can come here and say that the mean of the model that we have, it can be represented by these ones. We can say, okay, the mean, it can have an intercept. We can call the intercepts as, let's say, the B0, plus, we can have, for example, the weight, we can have, for example, the V1 times, I should say, the weight. Plus, I should say, the B2 as another slope multiplies into the weight, which is going to be, I should say, weight now in this case is squared function. And that's the thing that we are just going to look into that. However, before we just go to the R, we notice that here, we can just, as we look at the weight, we can look at it as the x, and also the weight squared, it can be regarded as the x squared. Then. then we have the slopes of the b2, b1, and the interests of the b0, which are just going to be estimated using the dynamic Hamiltonian Monte Carlo. However, in order to do these ones, we need to learn something before we just go to the stand because in that case we have to modify the stand and add another blocks into our data sets look at that if i just look at the weight of these women and if i just store that into an object as the x we know that we can transform essentially that's that's the word which i'm just going to use i'm just going to use the word transform which is essentially means that I can just say, okay, I can just create the x squared, which is going to be the weight of those women, which are going to come to the power 2. Then here, the thing that we just are going to look into that thing, which is going to be crucial for our model is that the word which we have here, transform, is going to generate another block into our data sets, which is going to be called transform. data and that's essentially what do we mean that's what we mean by transforming the data the effect of this transformation has three direct impacts first of all onto the data itself and also onto the parameters itself because we are adding one new parameter which is going to be essentially the slope for let's say for the weight squared and also the model has to be modified then now without further ado i'm just going to go back to the r itself and just do these modifications one by one. I'm going to go to the original stand file. 
the original stand file that we created on the prior module was this one we had essentially three basic blocks for the data parameters and also the model and we noticed that we talked about the x which it was our predictors or just the weight i can just add a new comment which it was a woman's weight and also we just said that it's going to be a vector of the length n and we talked about the n as i should say the number of the rows in our data sets we had extensive i should say explanations about these ones on the prior modules and also for the response variable which is going to be the woman's height the woman's height that's what we said it was our data block and the parameters the alpha which it was the parameters for the slope for the weight or x and we had the beta as for the intercepts and we had also sigma which sigma in our model is going to be essentially the same thing the sigma it was a method for identifying the dispersion in our model then that's that's the sigma that we had this in our model okay these are going to be parameters and we notice that these ones are just going to be incorporated into a normal distribution which is going to be a kind of a likelihood for us and that one is going to be essential like that we had the intercepts and the alpha as a parameters for the x which represents the weight and also the sigma in our normal distribution which is identified and represented by two parameters one the mean which the mean is a linear function of the weight and also the sigma however if we just want to have a better i should say model for that case and as what we saw from the plotting of those women's heights and weights with a linear model and it suggested that there can be a quadratic function as a better fit for our data what we are just going to do here is going to be a kind of a simple modification by adding a new block which we're just going to call that transform block data transform i'm just going to say that as the data i open the curly brackets just go to the next line to define this transform data why do i call that a transform data because if you just go back to see that it's a kind of a transformation from the weight to the weight squared and that's why we create it as a transform data here what is going to be our transform data we are just transforming the x and i'm just going to explain how to just create our transformed data block which is going to be very crucial in order to build a robust model then we are transforming essentially our weight our weight in our model has been represented and named by a dummy variable as the x and that's why i just start with the x i'm just going to score that x that's why i'm just going to come here with this simple abbreviation you can name it anything you want i just call that it's going to be x squared x underline sq it's going to represent a dummy variable which is going to be named for the transformed data you can name it anything you want the way which i named it it's going to be very consistent that how did i define the weights in our basic data block it's going to be the whole of the name then when i'm done i'm just going to press a semicolon there that's the convention in the stan coding whenever you are done with the line of code you finish it by putting a semicolon there and i'm just going to add a note there by pressing the double of this i should say forward uh, uh slash then i'm just going to add the note as the transformed data i can continue as the square of the weight okay now but however you know that whenever you are defining a kind of a data you have to just give an address to the stand that whether that data is going to represent an integer a real number 
or it can be a vector or in higher dimension it can represent a matrix now if r hat initially i should say the x as a vector the vectorize our data in order to have a very efficient computational i should say algorithms if the x itself was a vector of the left end it's squared also of the x it's going to also represent a vector i'm just going to write the vector without the hesitation but at this stage stan is asking me what is the length of that vector then i'm just going to just go ahead with the i should say we put the brackets and i'm just going to put the n which is going to be the number of the rows in our initial data sets and i know that between the n and the x squared there should be only one space okay now i'm done with introducing just the name of the transformed data now here stan knows that i have a transformations of the initial the raw data sets however that transform data is going to be called x squared it's going to be vectorized with the left n and n is i should say is the number of the rows of my data sets which is equivalent to the number of the observation or the number of the data points when you have them plotted okay now stand right now that is being introduced to the name of the new data sets is going to ask you how x squared is going to be defined and in order to define the x squared what is the x squared it's going to be very simple we have to just give the formula to show that x squared it has a recipe we know that the x underline x squared that's the thing which i defined that previously comes with a formula and you know that symbol which is it's a kind of a equal in r or stan you can also go with the equal sign it doesn't make any difference i got used to put this symbol in the r you can go ahead but if, in case if you are more comfortable put the equal sign there but what is a recipe for the x squared we know that the x squared is x times x itself and that's what i'm just gonna do x represents the weight i'm just gonna put x times x however that's x squared as what we know that for example in the r but the symbol and the, the notation i should say in the stand is going to be somehow very similar to the c plus plus and also the matlab if you have program there you know that when you multiply two vectors because you know that the x is a vector that i identified that in the data block you see that the x is a vector of the length n you saw that in the matlab or the x c plus plus when you multiply two vectors in order to show that each component of each vectors they are just being multiplied together components by components you just add a dot i should say before i should say the multiplication symbol in i should say in the stand that's what you have been doing probably when you were working i should say in matlab or c plus plus that's the end of the recipe which means that that's the end of the line of this code in the stand which it means that i have to close that line by a semicolon in case if you feel more comfortable you can just go ahead and add a comment that you said that the formula for the transformation which is a square one but please take care of this symbol notation that this one has to be i should say written as i should say dot times the multiplication okay now it's going to be about this and that's the recipe which we created for that transformation now however we know that in order to just move ahead it's going to be i should say this transformed data block we do not have to just make anything else inside that block because we are simply done we do not have any other transformation however i know that before i just run the model which i had i have another parameters of the data because if i just go back i see that the weight squared which i have created which is going to be called also the x squared it incorporates another coefficients or the slope or another parameter in terms of i should say the terminology that we use in parametric bayesian analysis that another coefficient sorry that another features or another variable 
it bring itself with itself another parameter which is going to be i recall that in this model b2 but however when we just go to the parameters block i can add another i should say parameter we can call that gamma the way which i'm just using the parameters is not going to be very consistent because it was better that we just call parameters for example define the parameters for example for b naught we can call b for example for the weight and b underscore for example for the uh, weight square but here in that case we just randomly assign single parameters to this data okay however if i just call gamma as i should say the parameter for the weight squared i know that this one also in the parameters i have to specify it's going to be a real number we have to just show the identity of that thing and that's why we show that essentially a kind of uh, uh, a real parameter is going to be gamma that was essentially the new parameters that we incorporate into the model and still we have the sigma wherever it is i'm just going to still save it in case if something happens i do not lose anything i'm just going to move on adding this parameter and the new features it incorporates that we can just include that into our model i can before i adding i should say the intercepts i can say the gamma multiply to i should say the x sq which is the parameter which i identified that before plus i should say the beta as an intercept why i have x squared as you notice that in our data block x represented a vector which is going to be for the woman's weight and we transform that into the x squared as this is weight times itself and now in our model you see that also as we have it in our whiteboard the new which is going to be the mean is essentially represents by this quadratic function and i didn't do anything except i included i should say the quadratic terms into the mean of the model then i have the weight times its slope weight squared times its own slope plus its intercept and i have also the sigma written there now i'm just gonna go ahead i'm just gonna save it as let's say for example save it as the way it is and now what i'm just gonna do i can just go back to the woman data sets which i have been working with and now you can just save it into a different stand file you can save it in case if you want if you do not want to lose the thing which you had before you can just go ahead save it although it's going to be a little late for me you can save it as a woman quadratic stand you can save it with that name and when you just go back i should say to a woman i should say r you can just go back to write rewrite the model itself you can write as quadratic underscore model it's going to be the name of the model that you created and you're just going to put the stand file which comes with the r stand you know that we just write the file which is going to be the name of the stand file that we have you can check it there you can refresh the file which we have let me just uh, go ahead and choose the working directory okay that's going to be my working directory and you see all the files which i have there and you see that stand file which is going to be the woman underscore underline quadratic dot stand i just move on with the data i haven't changed the data because the data stand woman it's going to be remain the same thing data stand woman it remains the same thing because we just have the x as the x which we defined x as the woman's weight and y we define as a y because it's going to be the woman height and n is going to be the number of the rows of our data sets which it represents also the number of the observation we do not make any changes in our data sets because we didn't in 
involve any new data sets, any new features, except the fact we transformed our existing data or features. Our transformed data, it's not something new. It's the thing which we already had, but we transformed it that algebraically. That's why our initial data for the woman, which is a list, it didn't change at all. Then I'll just go ahead with the iter. I'm just number of iteration are just going to be 1000. And the warm up, I say that, okay, it's going to be at least half off the number of the iterations. The model is now prepared. And the thing which I'm just going to do, I'm just going to execute that model by pressing Control Enter. But before that, we just make sure that the stand is the model which has our, our stand is ticked. It shows that the model is ready to be implemented. Now, I'm just going to execute the line by pressing Control Enter and the model gets actually say processed. Okay, it seems that we just got the error message. Let's go to check what's going to be the error there. Okay. It says that we have a problem with the formula. Let's go back to the woman quadratic and see that how we can just change it. Okay. It took, I should say, I had to just make, I should say, now the model is going to fix. You see that the, I had to just make a space between the dot, which I initially had, and the star. And by doing that, essentially, the stand knows that the dot doesn't belong, I should say, to the x. Dot belongs to the operations that it's going to be the multiplication. I make sure I save it. I go back to the fight itself. And I just move on to re-execute the, the line by pressing Control Enter. And you see that the model is being processed. Ignore this message. We do not have to do anything with that text as an error message. We are waiting for the model to be processed and gives us, I should say, uh, the estimates of the model. And at the end, when we are done, the best thing to check that if the model is going to work the best, you saw that we can just come here to define, I should say, another block which is going to be the topic for the next tutorials that we are just going to replicate and we are just going to create, I should say, the generated quantities and replicate, I should say, the predicted value and replicate it of our observation to see that our model can produce the same observation which it saw before. And now I'm just waiting for the model to just search for the uh, deepest gradients, I should say, in the parameter space, then the change is going to be, I should say, uh, in parallel is going to go and converge into one spot in the model then. As I'm just waiting for that, you see that it's the model is being processed. We see the process, the chains are going down. From the warming up, it moves down from chain number one. And after, I should say, 500 iterations, the initial ones, you see that we are just moving to the sampling. We give it some couple of seconds that they have this being done for all the chains, from chain number one going all the way to the chain number four. Now we are going to the chain number four, and probably should have noticed that the processing time for the iterations, it takes a little bit longer than the one which we had for the linear, I should say, iterations, because in that sense, you saw that because our model is getting a little bit more complicated, and the model takes more time to converge by doing the sampling and converge into one spot in, I should say, in the parameter space. You saw that we are just for the chain two. It took 25 seconds. Now we are going to the chain number three. And now we will move, in, I should say, to the sampling. And chain number three is also getting finished. It took 30 seconds also for chain number three. We are moving straight to the chain number four. And in the chain number four, we are now past, I should say, the warm up. We are just doing the sampling and drawing from, I should say, uh, we are doing the sampling on the posterior distribution. And we are getting almost done. 
900 out of 1000 iterations and now we are done and it also took around 30 seconds and as i said we do not take care of this error message we can disregard it however the thing which we are done right now we are just going to check i should say for the convergence we are just going to go for the trace plot i'm just doing everything together in case that we can just save some time that on the next tutorial we can just move on to i should say to the replication quadratic i got the model i do the trace plot of the quadratic i had some spelling error i just run the function and you see that we have some problems i should say as you can see from for some of the convergence the model you can see that for the beta we didn't have enough convergence and now you see that our model is not fully converged then it's going to be a good topic that we're just going to talk about that in the next tutorials that it's going to be i should say the parameter tuning in order to make sure that the model converges properly you see that for the beta which is going to be our intercepts the model did not converge you see that these zigzags they are not fully on top of each other we can say somehow for the sigma that the model has converged but for the other parameters each chain is not superimposed onto the other one then we see that for each chain we have a different estimates for our parameter of interest for example for gamma the chain i should say number i should say two has a different estimates for the gamma than the other chains that they have just um, arrived to and also for the alpha and the same even worse for the beta it's going to be a good point to stop and then when we just meet on the next tutorials we're just going to talk about some model tuning in order to make sure that we just achieve the level of the convergence that we expect which is going to be normally done by increasing the number of the iterations and smalling i should say making smaller i should say step size in the model there. okay we had a very productive session right now in the next tutorials when you come back we talk about the model tuning which makes sure that the model converges before we just go on to just make our estimates of the model because at this stage we cannot just find any reliable estimates for a parameter because the model has not converged. Okay, I can't wait to start the next tutorial when we talk about an interesting concepts of the model and parameter tuning.